uh, email. But before we even go any farther, I think we should define spam because not, not everyone agrees what spam is. How do you define spam? So we try to take a look at what the user uh, defines it as. So we find the definition that works best is unwanted bulk email. Okay. So the, um, the Direct Marketing Association would say, well, there's spam and then there's email from Disney. And, and you know, they're different things. But you say if, the, if you don't want it and it's being sent to a lot of people at a time, that's spam. Right. So in, in the end of the day, if you're unhappy with your email experience, we're not happy. Or right. We're not we're doing right. our job. We want to help you filter it out. So how, how do you filter out spam? What are the ways people use to filter out spam? So there's generally four different major uh, strategies of filtering spam. Okay. First is called the blacklist. And that's a, uh, a list of an IP addresses that basically any, any message coming from that, that source will be defined as spam. Okay. Now that's probably not hugely effective because don't they move around and change their addresses and things like that? They certainly do. They, yeah. They're constantly trying to conceal their identity. Right. So having a blacklist would probably get rid of some, but not all. That's right. So what's the second technique you use? Second is a, is a, a technique called pattern matching. And this is the idea that you're trying to group uh, emails of very similar content together. So if you can make a decision on one email, then you can make the same decision on a bunch of different uh, other emails. Now that doesn't maybe work as well on the uh, user's client computer, but it works great for somebody like you. You see a lot of email, so if you can find one example of that spam, you can stop it from going to everybody, right? That's exactly right. So on the, on the ISP side, that's a really good technique. Absolutely. So you've got blacklisting, you've got pattern matching, which is kind of like an antivirus does, right? Exactly. What's the third one? Uh, heuristics is a uh, way of having a bunch of different rules that act in conjunction with each other to define different spammy characteristics. Right. So if a, a rule might be something like uh, if the word free exists or if it has a bunch of exclamation marks, yeah. what have you, yeah. uh, then you can increase the spamminess of that, of that email and okay. define it as That's spam. also like an antivirus works. It tries to look at virus-like activity. That's right. I guess spams and viruses isn't really too very different. They're very, know? very similar. <laughs> the same kind of problem. And what's the fourth uh, technique? It's a uh, Bayesian or statistical filter. Mm -hmm. So the idea here is as you train a um, um, filter to become spam or not spam, right. then it's taking every single message message or every single word in the message and giving that mess, uh, that word a spamminess probability. Kind of weighting it based on how much it occurs in spam versus regular. That's yeah. exactly right. I use I actually use a, a Bayesian filter on locally, but it seems like f all four techniques in conjunction would be even the be better way to go. That's definitely the best yeah, way. That's to go. what you you're doing. Exactly. What, now, uh, in this, uh, it, this is a Yahoo Mail account. I guess this is somebody yours account or somebody. So this is when you see a message like this that gets in the spam mailbox you'll have the opportunity to, to mark it by, that it's, oh no, that's from mom. Right. Not from, that's a big issue too, isn't it? Fault, what we call false positives, where a message that you want is flagged as spam. Right, you certainly don't want to have any messages you don't want in your inbox, and you don't right. want to have messages that you, uh, you want in your, uh, your bulk mail folder. It's kind of a balancing act though, isn't it? I exactly. mean, if you turn the filters up too high, you're going to accidentally get stuff. Mailing lists are particularly susceptible to this. Uh, right. And I know Yahoo has a big, ma uh, Yahoo Groups is a great mailing list. Uh, so you, you guys must do some stuff about mailing lists too. You, you're kind of smart about mailing lists. Yeah, so we're constantly trying to find out what types of mail that people really want into right. their inbox and then right. make sure that our filters are tuned appropriately so th those mails end up in your inbox. So this would be one way that users can let you know exactly. this is not something I want. You can also do it the other way around. If you're looking at, at, at an email that came into your mailbox, if you say, hey, that's spam, as this one is, uh, you can mark it by clicking the spam button. And that will add it to your list. And then does that block it from other people as well? Uh, so we're taking that information and trying to figure out what the techniques that spammers are using and why they missed it, right. why, why we missed it to update our filters. So, so it uh, does update it. You wouldn't automatically say, oh, now this is spam for everybody because some people may want this. Right. So we're just trying to optimize uh, right. the entire experience across all of our Yahoo Mail users. Uh, what are spammers doing to get around this kind of stuff? I mean, they're, they're, they seem like they're... they're it's a, it's a battle between you and the spammers, and they're constantly upgrading their techniques, right? Exactly. Just as you're upgrading your filters. Right. So we see uh, three major ways. The first is what we call social engineering. This is a ploy to try to get you to open the email. Right. So they make the subject line something like, hey, how are you? Right. Or uh, make the, the from address something like a generic name like Patty Lee or what right. have you. So you, you It might looks more, real. Exactly. They also, and this is even more effective against automatic spam filters, make their email look as much like a normal message as possible, right? They, t they don't, they're stuck. A lot of these guys don't put the exclamation marks anymore. They don't put free. They don't put right. sex. They'll change to make it look like a real message. It's more likely to get through, right? Right. So they're trying to conceal their content in this case. So right. they can uh, insert random. There's tons and tons of uh, different HTML techniques that they can use to try to, to get around the, uh, the filters. You have a, an example here of uh, uh, this is a, well, we should show the original, actually. Right. 
This is, so this is an email that's clearly spam. First of all, what is this YCZ Bloy star star? What's that? Did you guys add that? So this is actually one of the things that the spammers are using to try to get around the pattern matching. So uh, in this email, it was YCZ blah. Right. But then the, the next email that the spammer sends, it might be a slightly different. So, so that's a random thing that is sticking in there. Trying to get around that pattern and matching. And your statistical filter will go, oh, well, that's not a spam word. Right. Must be OK. It's a novel word, right, exactly. This is why you need more than one technique, isn't it? Exactly. This is another thing that they, they, they do. They hide. What, what is this? Right, so this, this is, is like the exact same message that we just saw. So each of these yellow dots indicate some uh, random tags that are HTML tags that are invisible to the user, but <laughs> or can be seen by the, uh, the, the filters. Oh, man. So you can see, like, universities is, uh, is really hard to read, um, even from a human, but uh, especially for a, a, a computer. But, but, but when the human looks at it, it looks just like that one that you just showed. That's right. This is, they're, in fact, the same exact That's same That's the same message. message. Very sneaky. They're very, very sneaky. Very devious. Uh, Who's responsible for fighting spam? Is it the end user? Is it the internet service provider? Is it government? Who's, who should be really fighting this? I mean, it's all, all of us. Just like in all the internet type of things, we want to work together to, uh, right. to fight it as a right. whole. I, I do believe that whether you're using Yahoo Mail or, or uh, your uh, internet service provider's based mail, your ISP really has to have good spam policies and good spam filters. And if they don't, then you should go to one that does or use Yahoo Mail or something that does because that's the only way to keep your mail box f you know, empty. Keep it, keep it full of... Good things, not bad. Well, I, I appreciate your coming by, Miles. Is, is this battle just going to go back and forth forever and ever, or at some point, are we, or, is, or is our good guys going to win? What? Um, we're, we're very optimistic. You uh, think so? Yeah. We're, um, I mean, at the end of the day, if users are still buying things through spam, That's the key, isn't uh, it? then spam is going to exist. So spam only exists because it's profitable. That's right. So it's, if we make it not profitable for them to use it, whether it's through filtering, or not buying anything. Laws, suing them, yeah. what have you. Yeah. All these different uh, multifaceted approaches uh, will help us uh, win the war. Raise the pain threshold on spam. Thank you, Miles. If you're worried about being deluged by spam, check out Miles' top tips on keeping yourself spam free. And uh, Yahoo Mail is one good one, especially those, uh, uh, those aliases. That's a great idea. You can find it on our website, techtv.com slash call for help. Coming up next, some lucky son of a gun's about to get a shot at our big board full of prizes. And thanks to RCA, every single square is a winner. No Leo's Almanac in there. The Wire World Challenge with Call for Help continues. Stay here.